Hey everybody, what is going on? Hexlex here. I got another Master Duel video for you. Uh, wanted to play a little bit more in the event. Uh, I've actually kind of been slacking on this event. Uh, it's only a few days out and I am still pretty far away from finishing my mission. So definitely want to make sure that I am getting that done and getting those free gems in. And um, while I have been having a lot of fun playing Adventure Synchron, I've also been playing it a lot this season. Uh, so I decided to try something else. And, you know, I was thinking about it and... I, I was like, what better excuse than playing an all Link extra deck would I have uh, to go back to the very first deck I ever played here in Yu-Gi-Oh! Master Duel, and that's going to be Tri-Brigade. Uh, this deck will always have a special place in my heart for that very reason. But yeah, Tri-Brigade was the very first uh, deck I, I picked up in Master Duel. Fun fact, I never intended to like become a Master Duel content creator, uh, or even really play Master Duel that seriously. Um, from what I recall, I was basically like just waiting a week for Pokemon Legends Arceus to come out, because I was excited about that game. <laughs> um, <laughs> I mean, it was an alright game, but whatever. Anyway, so, and I, I, you know, I'd been hearing about Yu-Gi-Oh! Master Duel, so I was like, okay, I'll play this for, to occupy my free time a little bit for a week while I wait for Pokemon Legends Arceus to come out, and, um, you know, I caught back up a little bit on Modern Yu-Gi-Oh! I pulled from the introductory selection pack that had a lot of competitive stuff in it. I was actually planning on building Sky Striker, because I was like, this deck seems simple enough, I'll just build this. But then, uh, before I pulled any engages, I actually pulled two, two Tri-Brigade Shurig, the Ominous Omen. And I had seen people saying that, at the time, this was the best deck in the game. So I was like, you know what? Why not? I'll just look up this deck, I'll try to figure it out, and then we'll go from there. And I could not for the life of me find any, like, Master Duel exclusive Tri-Brigade combo guides, so I kind of had to, like, repurpose TCG guides, and that's kind of what inspired me to post Tri-Brigade videos for Master Duel, which is kind of where everything kicked off. So, a little bit of a, I guess, hex likes history lesson there, <laughs> uh, for those of you who, uh, who didn't know, but... Yeah, Tri-Brigade. Uh, like I said, deck has a special place in my heart. Now, Tri-Brigade Zodiac was, of course, the uh, Tier 1 deck at the time. Um, also, I've said this before when this has come up in the past, but I just want to get on my soapbox about this for a minute here. <clears throat> so, everyone calls the first Master Duel meta uh, Drytron meta, or like Drytron Eldritch meta, because those were perceived to be the best decks in the game at the time. Um, and they were... But, I will add that they were with the caveat of the coin flip glitch. For those who don't know, when Master Duel very first came out, and this was true for the first, like, four seasons, the first four months of the game, um, if you lost the coin flip, you could quickly close out of the game before the duel actually started, and it wouldn't actually count as a loss against you. So basically, you could just keep doing that until you won the coin flip, uh, basically ensuring you would always go first every time. And would you believe that when Drytron or Eldritch, with every Floodgate at 3 and Imperial Order and Vandy's Emptiness Legal, can always win the coin flip and go first, they actually end up being the best decks? Now, granted, they were probably just Tier 1 anyway, but I will argue that in a fair meta, Tri-Brigade Zodiac was actually the best deck because it could actually go second, unlike the other two decks, you know, Drytron and Eldritch. So, anyway, just had to rant about that for a moment. Let's talk about this actual deck in front of us here, though. So, um, like I said, Tri-Brigade Zodiac was the deck that I started with, but without the ability to play Xyz, I didn't feel the need to include the Zodiac engine. Um... If it had been legal, I think the Fire King package would have been great here. Um, but, as I'll show you here for the event... Uh, hang on, where is it? There we go, Forbidden. Yeah, they banned pretty much every single new Fire King card. <laughs> so, not even pretty much. They actually did just ban every single new Fire King card. So, uh, no Fire King to help us out here. So, we're going in with pure Tribrigate here. Excuse me, take a sip of water there. With, of course, our main line uh, being to set up the Tri-Brigade Revolt into the Shurig here to get us a lot of advantage on our opponent's turn, as well as putting down a body that has a non-target banish on it. Um, pretty much we have just a streamlined strategy to do that. Uh, it doesn't sound like a lot, but it is actually a better than it seems. Uh, you do also set up some additional disruption along the way, uh, namely the Ancient Warrior's Oath Double Dragon Lords. 
which you don't actually summon uh, by using any Ancient Warriors monsters. We don't play those. Uh, instead, we summon this exclusively off of the Trivergate monsters effects. For those who somehow don't know, uh, I can see a world where people might have never played against this deck uh, if you started playing very recently. But the Trivergate deck, uh, all of the main deck monsters have the ability to banish Beast, Beast Warrior, and or Wing Beast monsters in your graveyard to summon a Link monster of those three type of one of those three types. Uh, with an equal link rating from your extra deck. Now, the important thing to remember is that this is link summoning off of an effect. It's not a quote-unquote real link summon. Uh, this is important to remember because you cannot special summon from the graveyard or banish a link monster that was not properly summoned or any extra deck monster, right? Uh, so you won't be able to bring stuff summoned off the Trivergate effects back with Revolt. You do have to keep that in mind and make sure you're either actually linking into one of these Link 2s, which you do most of the time anyway, or setting up, you know, four names in your graveyard, which is also, also actually not difficult to do at all. Um, I have maxed out on starters for this deck here, <clears throat> because we are playing it pure and we don't have any other engines to uh, really help us out, right? So... Uh, we're on three Fire Formation Tanky. We've got two Small World. I don't actually know how good Small World is going to be, but in theory, Fractal and Rescue Cat should be fairly easily searchable off of them. And Rescue Cat, we are playing a full playset of that as well to summon Keros and Kit, which are both beasts from the deck there. So, uh, Gamma seems quite good in this deck between Tanky and Fractal and Rescue Cat and Small World. Uh, we have so many plays that start off without actually committing a summon to the board, so uh, Gamma should be quite good against those. Um, I don't know exactly how good this deck will be against Tempai. I guess we're going to find out because I do expect that we'll face against quite a bit of that. Um, you know, being that we're on Lynx, uh, we're going to always get paired against non-Lynx decks as a priority, which will pretty much always be Synchro uh, in this current Dual Triangle. Oh, also, I've seen people ask before why you play a Scareclaw Lightheart in Tri Brigade. Um, again, we're not actually summoning this off of the materials. Uh, it's like the Ancient Warriors Oath. We sometimes summon it off of like one of the Tri Brigade effects. Very, very occasionally, if you get disrupted, you'll only have one body in the graveyard. But if you play Lightheart, you can banish that one body for Lightheart and then potentially go into like an SP or another Link too, if that ends up being helpful. So, and it's also a Beast Warrior, so it's a Tri Type itself. So, wanted to make sure I pointed that out there. Um. You know, it's been long enough that we've seen this archetype on this channel that I think I will go ahead and break the list down card by card uh, before I get into some live games. I mean, playing these games live here because uh, I've been having a lot of fun doing that. A lot of people really seem to like it in the comments. So definitely going to be keeping that up when possible. So uh, for this list, we're on one Cyphering Driver, three Effect Failure, three Tri Brigade Nerval, two Cyphering Gear Gamma, three Tri Brigade Keros, three Tri Brigade Kit, two Ghost Ogre and Snow Rabbit, three Ash Blossom and a Joy Spring. 3 Rescue Cat, 3 Tri Brigade Fractal, 1 Foolish Burial, 2 Triple Tactics Talent, 2 Small World, 3 Fire Formation Tenki, 2 Call by the Grave, 3 Infinite Impermanence, and then 1 Tri Brigade Revolt. It's going to be our 40 card main deck. For the extra, <clears throat> we are on 1 Salmon Great Almirage, 1 Scareclaw Lightheart, 1 Hita the Fire Charmer Ablaze, 1 Ancient Warriors Oath Double Dragon Lords, 2 Tri Brigade Ferrajit the Baron Blossom, 2 Tri Brigade Bear Brum, the Rampant Rampager, 1 SP Little Knight, 1 Nightmare Unicorn, 1 Tri Brigade Rugal, the Silver Sheller, 1 Appaloosa Bow, the Goddess, 1 Access Code Talker, and then 2 Tri Brigade Shurig, the Ominous Omen. There's our list. Let's go ahead and see these duels now. All right, hopping on into the dual triangle, I'm going to have to switch my group here over to Link, and then let me go ahead and copy uh, this one, yep, for the event. Uh, I didn't practice... <laughs> I'm going to be relying on my old memories slash instincts when it comes to figuring out these lines. Alright, we're, we're winning the coin flip, so I'm just going to go first here. I'm not going to try to be tricky and make them go first and assume it's Tempai. I'll just, uh, I'll play this straight up. Alright, time for some Tri-Brigade gaming. Oh my god, it's been so long. Uh, I'll start with Tenki here and see if I can't bait out an Ash Blossom with that, even though I'm already holding two Fractals. Not a great first hand here. Pretty redundant, but, um... Okay, so they... Seems like they probably have an Ash Blossom, but they're just gonna let me grab the Fractal. It's pretty smart of them. Although, this is actually one of those hands where... Uh, it's gonna be a good thing that we play Lightheart, because this is gonna get negated, right? No, it's not. Okay, that's very nice. So, uh, we're gonna send Kit... And then Kit F, 
All right, so this should be full combo then. Well, they have something, but I wonder if it's DD Crow. DD Crow doesn't actually do too much against this deck because, uh, if I recall correctly, you always banish for cost. Yeah, so uh, we're gonna add Chaos here because we have Chaos and Fractal. Hmm. Okay, so. Um, we need to summon a Bear Brum for the Revolt. Uh, there's no real point to going for Ferrigy here because I can already special. Well, I guess I could go for Ferrigy and then not have to discard. That would actually be pretty good. So let's do it that way. Uh, I'm going to start by normal summoning Fractal. And then we'll activate Fractal. I'm going to banish two here. Um, let's banish. I don't think it like super matters what you banish. It kind of does for grabbing stuff off the Revolt. I'll banish a Kit and Nerval here. So we're going to summon Ferrigit. Ferrigit F to summon Chaos. If that gets negated, we can special Chaos off its own effect. I like this. Okay. We can also cycle the Tanky for the draw when we link off the Ferrigit. Alright, so we're going to summon Chaos. Now, okay, um, I link these two off for Bear Brum. Then I can use Chaos's effect to summon Double Dragon Lord. Let's do it that way. Yeah, because we need to go into Bear Brum at some point in order to be able to search the revolt. Let's put this over here. Plus, now that we've properly summoned Bear Brum, we can actually bring her back off the effect. That's a great draw. Oh my god, we're definitely putting this Senki back. Alright, Chaos F to banish two. Um, we'll just hit the Fractals here. Like I said, we're gonna go for Ancient Warrior's Oath, Double Dragon Lords. Sit to the graveyard, right? Yes, it's just when it's sent to the graveyard. I could actually end on SP here, turn one. It's a bit of an interesting proposition. Like, what else am I gonna make? I guess I could go for an Appalooza, but in that case, I definitely shouldn't have summoned double Dragon Lords. If I wanna still end on this, which wouldn't be bad, I could just make SP anyway. I'm just gonna do that, I think. Although I won't have an open link zone because SP's arrows are pointing to the sides. That's the only problem, though, to summon the Shurig. So I think I do have to summon Appalooza here, which isn't ideal. I shouldn't have made double Dragon Lords. I should have gone for another Link to you. I think that's fine, though. Uh, sure. All right, Bear Bramath. I guess this stops the Ash Blossom, too, if they've been holding it, waiting for the Bear Brum. That would be wild if they did. I mean, that's not, like, necessarily incorrect. It's just, like, I'd be surprised if anyone still had that instinct. Because that's a, that's, a, that's a response window that hasn't been relevant for, like, over two years now. Okay. That's, I mean, that's a, pretty, that's a pretty standard turn one setup for the Tri Brigade deck. Yeah, it's too bad. Like, I could have done SP Double Dragon Lord, and then I, in a perfect world, I would have done that instead. Like, I think I, I definitely prefer ending on those two as opposed to a three mad Apo, but. Again, we just wouldn't have the Link Arrows to summon uh, Shurig if we did it that way. It might sound weird to some people, like, why would you rather have two interruptions over Apo? Isn't Apo three? I don't treat Appalooza as three disruptions. I think you are incredibly lucky if you're able to get all three off. Wow, it's goaty. Okay, what does this do? To reveal this card and one water monster in your hand, special summon one of them and discard the other. Your hand into a graveyard, special summon target one face up monster in the field, Banjo leaves the field. Um, I mean, This could have said the graveyard is a synchro material. Target one, negate until the end phase. Yeah, I'm gonna Apo this. This kind of feels like bait, but I also have Valor and Ash Blossom on top of the revolt, so even if it is, it's like not that big of a deal. Triple attack would be extremely annoying here. I'm really gonna hope they don't have that. Okay, it's Gold Sark, good. 
I, I saw a spell slam down. I mean, that's like one of the many reasons why I never count uh, App Appalooza as three negates. Is like that's the kind of thing you got to think about with Appalooza. Like again, a lot of people think Appalooza is just three negates, but it's like there's so much more nuance to using an onboard Appalooza, and there's so many ways to, because there's so many ways to get screwed by your own Appalooza if you're not careful. Like that was a really risky Appalooza. Again, it might not have seemed like it, but. Okay, so this banishes is a cost, right? Banish, you banish one fish monster from your graveyard, add this card to your hand. Okay, and this is trying to summon itself. Is this a tuner? No, it's a level 6 non-tuner. Add a fish from your deck to your hand and banish a fish from your hand or field. I absolutely do not want that to happen, so I'm just going to stop the body from coming out altogether. Like... The, the level 6 non-tuner body is a little bit annoying, but I think the on summon effect is even more annoying. So again, might as well stop the body from coming out and, you know, again, stop both. Um, so they, they just slammed this down for the normal summon. If they move to battle phase, I can just flip revolt then. <laughs> Ironically, banishing this... Oh, that doesn't really do much. Just, what does it say? Target one of your guilty traps that is banished in your graveyard. Set that target. Okay. I maybe should have done that in the main phase because of Valor, but like, whatever. I have still have Appaloosa on the field. Besides, if I do it during main, they can just do follow-up plays, so I'll make them commit their battle phase here. Definitely want to prioritize our banished monsters because that puts them back in the graveyard to be used as material for a follow-up turn. Uh, we get to activate Nerval and Kit. That's the advantage bit I was talking about in the deck profile portion. There we go. Um, so yeah, I mean, that's a pretty standard Tri-Brigade. That's extremely standard, actually. Again, if I was gonna go into Appalooza, I should not have summoned Double Dragon Lords as my Link to. Uh, and now that I'm thinking about it, like, I have Hita in the extra deck right now. Because, like, we actually... 130, that's a weird number to get. Um... I have Hita in the extra deck right now, because in theory you can go, like, Hita with, like, Kit or... Uh, Ash Blossom or Fractal and steal a fire and go into Nightmare Unicorn and then maybe link up into Access Code, but I almost wonder if I shouldn't have another Link 2 to summon. But I also play two of each Farajit and Bear Brum. That should be enough. Uh, what was the other thing I was thinking about playing? Oh, a second Revolt. During that first game, I was kind of thinking about playing a second Revolt. But not for that game in particular, but I mean just in general. To have more of like follow-up plays if needed. It's probably not necessary. I mean, for a festival deck, it's like assuredly not necessary, but... Oh, we're going first. Here's Senpai. Alright, let's see what we can do here. Um, we do know that we're playing against Senpai too, which is very handy info, of course. Uh, this hand's okay. It's fine. I'm not really that enthusiastic about it. Um, mostly because we already opened... You know what, though? It's actually not a big deal that we opened Revolt. Okay, so if I summon Nerval, let's do it this way. I'm gonna start by normal summoning Nerval, and then we can go into Almirage. This is why we play Almirage, is in case you open Nerval plus any Tri-type. Uh, that's still full combo if you play Almirage. So we wanna add Keros here, that way, yeah, yeah, we have to add Keros here. Alright, Keros F. Discard kit to special, and then kit F. Hard to send fractal here. It's like, what else? I mean, we could send anything else, but. Now, here's the problem. I'd like to go Farage and then Bear Brum. I think I might be able to do that, actually. If I. Yeah, 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 I can do that. And then I can still full combo. I should be able to. Let's find out. Um, yeah, we're gonna banish two. And, yeah, let's do these two. Yeah, you should actually prioritize Kit and Nerval. I know I said before it didn't really matter, but... Okay, so if I summon Farajit, right, then I can link it off with Keros. Let's, yeah, 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 I'm gonna do it this way. Because this will let me cycle the Revolt back into the deck and get a draw and then still search it. So then we're gonna make Bear Brum with these two.
And then Farajit F. Draw. And then, yeah, we're probably just gonna return Revolt. I mean, we, we could also just put back the kit, because we would just add the Revolt and put back kit anyway. I'm trying to think of what I want to go into here. Um, yeah, I'm just gonna do it this way. I was a little greedy. I played that a little greedy, I think. Discard two cards, target one of your. No, that's not worth it. Oh, but I have to do that, don't I? Well, I actually don't have to, because my graveyard... No, my graveyard isn't set up. Ooh, I do have to do this. Um, yeah, that was a misplay on my part. Target one of your level four special summon it. I mean, I guess we can make Apo. I just have to give up Valor and Callby to do it. This is a misplay. I, uh, yeah, I misplayed this line. You should not have to do this pretty much ever. Oh, I didn't have to do this at all, because I still have two... Ah, oh, God. I thought I didn't have enough bodies for the... for the revolt, but I forgot I had two banished. I'm throwing so hard here. Although, actually, I'm not, because now I can summon Kit. Yeah, yeah, wait, this is actually fine. Wait, never mind. <laughs> so, remember how I said I was throwing? I actually found a secret good line. So, ignore me. I found a secret okay line. Oh, I found a secret good line. I think I'm willing to call this a good line. Basically, I gave up Valor. Oh, shit, but I can't use Almirage as a material. That's fine. We'll just make SP. We'll just make SP. Can I really not use Appalooza? Or can I really not make Appalooza here? I wonder... Is it because, hang on, so if I use this as two, no. Hmm. All right, I'll just make SP then. Uh, um, no. No, we're good, all right. Then we have a zone we can summon to. We can do it in three, because we can do Bear Brum plus two. Yeah, we're good. Okay. <coughs> Excuse me. Keeping the Almirage on the field for the Double Dragon Lords. Feather Duster now is really annoying, but, I mean, yeah, of course we're just going to chain this anyway. Probably should have guessed that from Tempai. I guess I don't have to summon uh, Shurig. Do I want to summon Shurig anyway? Would it be better to summon Rugal? It might be, actually. No, Shurig has 3k attack. We'll just summon Shurig. The 3k stat line can actually matter as far as like affecting their ability to like win that turn or not. Yeah, so unlike Super Factorial, it's not like... So Travigate Revolt and Mathematics Super Factorial are very comparable in what they do. The problem is with, like, uh... The problem is with Shurig is that, like, you know, if they Feather Duster Super Factorial, that's fine, you can still hand rip. But with Shurig, like, my opponent does not have a card for me to banish here, so... I am actually losing out a pretty sizable chunk of my uh, disruption to that. I'm just going to bin a normal here. I won't get another search, and I know that, but I just don't want it to clog up my deck, basically. I had a fractal, because why not? All right, we do still have a couple points of interaction. Never mind. Oh, wait. Um, I can use Almirage here. Let's protect the SP, right? Send one card from your hand or field to the graveyard. Target a face of card your opponent controls. Return it to the hand. Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll protect SP. That's fine. I doubt one SP Little Knight's going to be enough to, like, not die to Tempai here, but I guess we'll find out. Uh, Shurig F gets to activate. Just add Chaos, I guess. Upstart Goblin, that's interesting. I guess it doesn't really... I mean, it makes sense for deck thinning, right? Because uh, it doesn't really matter if they give me a thousand life points. 
because they're just going to deal... They'll deal way more than that anyway. Um, can one SP Little Knight actually stop in a Tenpai OTK? I somehow suspect the answer is no, uh, especially with the field spell up. Like, now they're just unaffected. And then they also get Sangye and Kaiman here. No, I'm just screwed. Yeah, I'm just going to surrender. Dang. I mean, it was exactly Regeki Duster, right? And then the combo. So, unfortunately, not too much we could do against that. I feel like I could have played that turn one better still. There, that, there was definitely still room for improvement there. Like, I did set up a better... Like, ah. I just... I, I should have thought about the fact that I wouldn't be able to set up Appalooza. I'm kind of still wondering why I wasn't able to. It shouldn't have been a Link Error issue, right? It was because I couldn't use Almirage as a material. I'm trying to remember why that is the case. Anyway. Oh, because you can only use Tri-Types as materials the turn that you activate a Tri-Brigade card's effect. That's what it is. I knew there was some, some clause or restriction that I was just forgetting, and that's what it is. Alright, so does it seem like they have anything here? We'll go Fractal, send Kit. Even though I open Kit, that's still fine. Do it this way. Kit, send Nerval. Just loading up our graveyard with Tri-types. Now we have three. That's more than enough. We're gonna get Keros here. Another hand where we can do pretty much the same thing that we did uh, that first game here. I'm gonna go... Fractal F for two. Uh, Banish Nerval and Kit, and then I'm going to go for Farajit. And then activate Farajit. Um, let's special summon the Kit, actually. Because we could potentially summon the Keros at, uh, still this turn. Alright, so... Do I want to make Bear Brum first? I think I do, actually. Put back this driver, see what we draw, Farajit. Get a little more info. I basically just want to see if I'm going to be able to summon this Chaos or not. No, okay, that's fine, that's still a great draw. Um, okay, so... We're summoning, like, another Farajit, I guess, here? I guess I could just summon a Lightheart here if I'm just making Appalooza, right? Like, I don't have to summon a Link to. I just need, like, one more material, so. God, that makes me want to play the, uh... Rykphobia in this deck. <laughs> the, summoning the White Heart off of that. Just, like, getting more advantage. Alright, and then Bear Brum F. Give me Revolt. And then, uh... We're just gonna put back Triple Attack, yeah. Let's keep Chaos for a follow-up turn. Oh, that was an interesting end phase priority pass opponent. Are you in Nib? I would have actually activated Nib. Like, if you have Nib there, you should definitely activate it. Like, you just, you get one of my Appalooza negates out of the way for free. And you get to keep the Nib. It's not like Appalooza negates and destroys. It's Tenpai. Um... Okay, so if I want to revolt and get rid of Sangen summoning, then I need to do it now. Because if they activate the effect, like, Shurig will go on a different chain link, right? So, again, like Laplacian and Super Factorial. Oh, uh, sure, why not? Some combo lines, you end on enough bodies on board that you have to be able to summon it in three. That's why it can be important to make the link to correctly, but here it doesn't matter. We have enough space. Probably should have summoned it in the middle. Doesn't really matter that much. All right, let's go. Uh, chain link one Nerval. I like to chain block here with chain link one Nerval, chain link two Shurig, and then chain link three Kit. That way, the Nerval can't get Ash and the Shurig can't get Gammed. If you chain block this way. I mean, we have the Appalooza, so it kind of doesn't matter anyway. Oh, they have Droplet. Interesting. Okay. 
Uh, by interesting, I mean bad. That's very bad for us. Because uh, <laughs> that kind of eats our whole board. We do still have an Imperm. Uh, of course, a Song Against Summoning does make it immune during the main phase, which is not ideal at all. Hmm. Yeah, I think that is actually probably just going to be another successful OTK. <laughs> uh, I'm not going to concede right now, but... Because now you activate Songen Summoning. It doesn't even matter what they have in hand, right? Songen Summoning for Pydra. Summon Pydra. Get Songen Kaiman. Move to Battle Phase. Kaiman for Shundra. I would have to Imperm Shundra on Summon. They could chain... Not even chain, they probably just battle and then activate Pydra. Interesting. Oh, this might be even worse for me then if they're adding Shundra. Or they're just normaling Shundra, and that's way better for me. Why did they not normal summon Pydra here? Oh, they just threw. Like, yeah, you can battle over my Appalooza, but you don't get to summon anything. Cool. All right. That's very, very good for us. Now they have one card. Yep. <laughs> yeah, no. Why would you not grab Pydra there? Yeah, you just do exactly what I described and then just win. Normal summon Pydra, add Songen Kaiman. Well, maybe not win, but at least be in a way better spot. Normal summon Pydra, add Songen Kaiman, move to battle phase, Pydra battle over... Appaloosa or Shura. Well, no, it would be Shura, because that's at 15. Then Kaiman for Shundra. I have to Imperm Shundra on Summon. Shundra battles over. Then they can Quick Sync for 7. Go for the Bident. Bring back the Pydra. That's 26. Now they're doing direct damage at this point. That's 26 plus 17 is 43. Go for the 3k battle. They've dealt three attacks. They can bring back Biden and then battle. Yeah, they, they had easy lethal there. I don't know why they didn't take it. Or I guess they didn't see it would be the reason. But anyway. Uh, yeah, I think that's going to go ahead and do it for these games. Um, so thank you for watching me step back in time a little bit. Back to 2022 and pick up Tri-Brigade again. Uh, Tri-Sprite is still something that is on my radar. So I would still like to try that at some point. But um, try it, huh? <laughs> All right. Uh, that's going to do it for now. Uh, let's just go ahead and move on to the outro. Hey everybody, Hexlex here. Just want to give you a huge thanks for watching all the way to the very end of the video. Uh, believe it or not, that is actually one of the best ways that you can support the channel, is by watching the videos in their entirety. But there are many ways in which you can support the channel if you are so interested. Uh, the names that you're seeing on screen here, I gotta give an extra special thanks to, because these are people who have chosen to either become a member on YouTube, which if you're interested you can do as well via the join button next to the subscribe button down there uh, or have signed up over on patreon and become members there link to that is going to be in the description below uh, without the support that is being offered by again all the people that you're seeing on screen right here um, I would not be able to take the time to dedicate to uploading daily YouTube videos so thank you thank you so very much but uh, there are also other ways you can support as well um, again link to the description below if you like my deck tracker that you'll see in a lot of my videos the untapped companion you can download that for free and if you use my affiliate link down there uh, then that also goes a long way towards supporting the channel uh, that's again free so is subscribing here on YouTube that's also free and a huge way to support uh, you can also uh, check out twitch once again linked in the description below following and subscribing over there will not only support as well but also give you notifications of when I go live if you want to catch some of the live streams um, but really no matter how you choose to support uh, it all adds up and it all definitely means the world. So thank you each and every one of you. Uh, for now, this is Hexlex. I'm going to be signing out. But more than that, I'm hoping that you have a fantastic day.